It's interesting you said that, you know, for someone like you, you would you'll still be very cautious about what we're saying right yeah. now. You would have yeah. preferred to resist the temptation. And <laughs> I think those are the words that you use, uh, that particular word you use, temptation. And, and some would say, well, it's understandable. You are uh, from the background of a military general. Uh, but mm. how the, the, the reality is that this is a democracy and, and these are rights enshrined in our constitution. I, I want to move away from that. I mean, we're saying... Uh, increasingly that the, the crowds are coming out. This is Sokoto. These are visuals coming in from Sokoto right now. We can see uh, what is happening. It would seem that there are sporadic protests here and there. People have spoken about the organizers of the protests being faceless. But we know that the people who are coming out are not faceless. They are Nigerians, and these are their faces. And, and sometimes some people will say, perhaps that's why, you know, this protest is very interesting. Because it would seem that for years, the common Nigerian has had no way to express himself or herself. There's been no avenue for the voice of the ordinary, the most basic person to be heard, uh, you know, through official government uh, quarters. And that it would seem that this is like one of the, let's like say one of the few times that we have even seen, you know, that people have said, look, we want to protest and, you know, government is willing to engage. I mean, there have been different levels of engagement. For you, what does this say about, you know, our engagement processes with ordinary, everyday Nigerians? We, yeah, we know that government is used to doing it through bodies, the NLC, TUC, you know, NAN, student body, etc. But we know increasingly also that there are so many people who are disenchanted or are not captured by these bodies and whose voices need to be heard. Um, how do you think that government can continue to further engage with these levels of people to explain its policies and perhaps the consequences of some of its decisions? Yeah, thank you very much. In fact, if you give me the opportunity, my advice to the government is this, very, very simple. Uh, for a while, even before this particular government, you know, even from the last government, government have been so reactive rather than being preemptive, even in engaging the citizens. And that, that has created this kind of atmosphere where there is kind of mistrust or distrust between the citizens and the government. Now, I would advise President Bola Tinubu particularly to reconfigure his media team. It should be a media stroke public relations team. We, look, leaders in this country have not been using the professional body. We have a, a National Institute of Public Relations you know, in this country with very sound technocrats who can frame a whole media strategy for the government. This one we have been seeing so far is a matter of reacting to one thing or the other. That should be, when the government has a program, that should also be an accompaniment of a media PR strategy to match and sell that program. That we engage you know, the public, not after something has happened, no, on a regular basis with well-packaged programs. The National Orientation Agency has been sleeping for years. And that's the problem when you had government that had, you know, more or less put up in abeyance the processes and the system. So people have gone to sleep. A, a lot, I mean, if you take a board and put it in a cage after a long time, the day you release it to fly, it won't fly. That's where we are as a nation. A lot of the engine of government are in a prostrate state because of the overbearing nature of previous government not allowing processes and systems to work. And so the people are just sitting, you know, they've even forgotten what they used to do in the past. So we, we have processes failing all over the places. That, that's, it's not only about media, it's everywhere else, everything else. Some of the problems we're talking about coming out of uh, policy uh, fallouts, you know, spin-off of policy decision, is they're also a result of failure to go through policy process. There's no such thing as a verbal policy. Not even at the home level does a father wake up one morning and say from today no more this and that and that's it. There is a policy problem. When the president speaks, it's an expression of intention that should now kickstart the policy process from setting the agenda to form formulation of policy to adoption of policy to implementation to evaluation. We have people who are experts in this field. It's why you have run through that. There are even proprietary you know, software applications for 
playing out and simulating these policies up front so you know what the effects and consequences will be and you prepare the you know how to engage that and how to deal with it up front before you turn out the policy that's how nations run it's, it's very shameful that we are running like this in this age 21st century so so it's every in fact it's everywhere you can think about i mean you you had something i said saying they were duplicated the uh, you know subheads in our in our budget how do you in this age and time that means our budgets have been done manuscript that means we don't have proprietary software applications that will have run through the that will you have a template for each ministry and then that will be called the peculiar subheads of each ministry be catered for if we have that then we can't be talking like this we can't be talking like this as if we have learned nothing all this while you know so, so it's everywhere so we need to go back to fundamentals we need to go back to get the engine of government to run. If an engine has not been running for years, you don't just start it and expect it to start running immediately. It doesn't work that way. Mm. So we need to go back to so many things. The National Orientation Agency should have a leader who will be giving some matching orders of what the president wants to see over a time. We need to mobilize the whole nation afresh. We have all gone comatose. It's a nation that has been so browbeaten by leaders who have you know boxed us to a corner to a state of stupor so everybody is we need to all wake up together